Uh, well, first of all, let's be clear. The Waitangi Tribunal is not a court. Uh, Karen Chua is a minister who's been part of a government that's been elected. Uh, she's going through the process of making a policy, taking papers to Cabinet and ultimately introducing a law to Parliament. Uh, that law uh, will stop things like the reverse uplifts where a kid gets put in a home for life and then gets taken out um, because the, way the Oranga Tamariki decided it was sometimes more important uh, that you're in a house with a particular race race uh, than one where you're safe. I mean, that's how despicable this law has been. Karen's, yeah, getting, Karen's, getting, yes, a, 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 yep, Karen's yep. getting rid of that. What an um, absolute the idiot. Would argue yep. that they're going to argue this in, in court today or something along these lines. Um, that, that actually, you know, as a government, we have a right to make policy uh, without being hauled in by this tribunal, which is not a court. They should be respecting um, our part of the world, uh, just as they should be respecting, we should be respecting theirs. Which they're absolutely not. He says we should be respecting theirs whilst we sit here and actively disrespect it, which is utterly, utterly redonkulous. Um, like yeah, the, sorry, you go. The, the, fal the false equivalence that he just drew between there of of them trying to balance being in a house of their own culture or family versus and it just a black and white choice here or being safe. Yeah, because you you can't you can't you've got to be one or the other. Yeah, can't be yeah. Right. I, I I know the case that he's he's trying to score political points off, and it's a shit show. Like it's a really challenging case, and I don't think it has been handled particularly well. Um, and it's just it's kids that are bouncing between an organisation that is going was at that point going through a seismic shift of like maybe us taking brown kids off their family and giving them to white families more often than not is 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 not a great thing to do. So maybe we need to do more consideration about placing people with far now. Um, but yes, again, uh, if you're brown, dangerous. It's so stupid. Dangerous though. for kids. It's so stupid. Like, if let's just, what when you take, you know, Māoridom out of the equation, you make it a different equation, right? Then it's, um, then it's really, you can see when it falls apart. So, okay, let's just do that. Let's just say you had French migrants to New Zealand, right? Let's just say that the seven-year-old from the French migrants only spoke French, right? Would it be better, would that child likely be better, better understood, better communicated with all these things? And I'm not talking about kids only speaking Māori, I'm talking about a similar culture. If that child was then put for care and with a New Zealand family that didn't know anything about France, didn't know anything about the language, didn't know anything about the culture, or is it likely they'd be better, have a better chance of success going in with a family at the very least who knew a lot about France and knew a lot about the culture and knew how parents and child children interacted. Well, of course we know the answer. It's redundant. But as soon as you in New Zealand and you can't see that perhaps a, a Maori child would do better with a Maori family, if you try and say that, well, that's just by their race. As soon as you take that argument and replace it like I've just done, you can see how nonsensical it is. There's, there's a way that these families, oh, yes, they're all Kiwis, we're all the same, but you know what? We function differently. The household runs differently. There's different expectations from a European with a European-centric uh, kind of family value or family operating operating system than there is from a Māori one. It, it's, it's just how it goes. So what's the problem? It's also completely ignoring what has happened in New Zealand historically and overseas historically. We're in colonial countries there was a real run of taking indigenous kids mm. off their families who of course couldn't fucking raise them according to the colonial state and given to white families you've got an entire generation of stolen children in australia stolen generation yeah yeah it, like literally stole it here in new zealand would just take kid maori kids off their families and put them in a borstal and that's how we gave birth to our gang problem yeah. Like just a generation of broken, damaged kids raised in abusive state institutions. And I think for him to just write that off of like, well, this govern this this government department is is, is just giving this namby pamby woke consideration to the to the ethnic background of these kids, uh, rather than making sure that they're safe. You can do both. That's my expectation, is that you weigh those two things together. It's not a black and white dichotomy. Yeah. Like, if you read the, the story, uh, I think it was, was News Hub that put it out about this case, about 
like there were there were some kids that were uplifted. They were siblings, and there was the other, they 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 were going to split them up because who who can foster? I think it was four or five kids in one hit. There's not not many people out there, and a family put their hand up and they did, and they were an English family, but they were very conscious of the fact that they were Maori children and they were going to reach out to the local marae and they sounded like they were going to put in all the effort. Uh, and then down the track, they found some family members that, that offered to take them. Now that, for, for any case manager, I that would that's a terrible choice to make. And it sounds like Oranga Tamariki absolutely fumbled that process. Mm. And left everybody feeling completely shit house. Things were said. It, it, it's it's a dog's breakfast. But th this is the thing that it, it's a complicated situation. If you fuck it up, you ruin a life. Well, you ruin several lives. You know, somebody is going to be put out. And I think to have David Seymour wading into something like that with all the tact and understanding that he lacks. And he's just going to go, I'm going to make points off the racial element here. He is the worst person. <laughs> I've is, heard that somewhere. It, it, every time he's the worst person. Kia ora again, Fano. The clip you've just watched is brought to you today by our patrons. If you want to be a part of what we do, if you want to get behind what we're doing, if you're enjoying our content and wanting to share our content, then maybe you would consider being a patron to Big Hairy News. Head to www.patreon.com forward slash Big Hairy News to sign up to one of our levels and be a patron. At this point, we are only a listener and viewer supported show. It all comes down to you guys. If you feel like jumping on board to help, then head to patreon.com forward slash big hairy news. Hooroo.